three, two, one, we're on. Hello everyone, here is another video of Marine Sciences with Kai. Today we're in Singapore and I'm sitting alongside a good friend, Ian. Uh, we both studied the Masters in Aquaculture and Marine Resource Management and Ian is currently the Feed Manager at Coolbara. He's an aquaculture specialist and we're going to have we're going to make him a few questions regarding aquaculture and the species he deals with every single day. So Ian, how are you? Good yeah, afternoon. Fine. Thanks for having me. Thank you for, for being here with me and yeah. uh, accepting this interview. So let's start with the first question. Okay. General Short, okay. what is aquaculture? So aqua means water and culture is culture. So aquaculture is the farming of all fish, crustaceans, seaweed, it can be in a pond, um, a rust system, and also sea cages. Right on. So it's a, it's a very... It's a yeah. You can farm it in any water body. It's now, what species do you work with? Yeah, so at, at a farm over in Singapore, we work only with Baramandi, it's also known as the Asian sea bass. Asian sea bass. So, yeah, these species range from the tropics, from Singapore to Malaysia, up to Thailand, and also Australia. So it's a tropical species. Is aquaculture of Baramundi more sustainable than wildcat Baramundi? So well, um, definitely farm Baramundi is um, better and more sustainable than wildcat because you farm it yourself. If you keep catching wildcat fish, you are just depleting the natural resource. And as you know, the population is growing, so more people eat protein and fish. So if you keep catching wild caught fish there's not going to be much left for the future okay. so if you farm it you're always having sufficient protein and food to supply and, right yeah for for the supply so again people many times there's a big controversy you probably hear it in a daily basis also that wild caught fishing is better than farm fishing, and what I mean better, it's it gives people say wild wild caught is more tasty. You got to give farm fish an equal chance if they say it's it's bad, because maybe these people have not really tried a farm fish. That's it. So it's only a one-sided view. But w the pros of having a farm fish is that you know what goes into the fish. Everything is fully traceable from the feed, and at every life stage, it's all recorded. So from, you know what goes into the fish, at what stage of life feed to artemia and to live feed. Yeah, 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 so true. you go, you know the whole process of what goes into the fish. But for wild caught fish, you don't know what goes into the fish. They can contain high mercury contents. That's true. That's the true. Plastic, microplastics in the fish, and everything is all accumulated in the fish body. So. It may not be that healthy, you know, um, yeah. eating a wild fish because you don't know what the fish consumes itself and the water body it's from, so the water quality. So, yeah, the a farm fish fun. and wild fish has both their pros and cons. What do you actually do? What is a feed manager as a farm? So, at, as a feed manager of the farm, um, I calculate um, the biomass and the specific feeding rate of the fish in each cage. So for example, um, there's 30,000 fish in this cage and they are supposed to eat at a specific feeding rate of 0 0.4. So if the fish don't eat at a specific feeding rate of 0 0.4 means they could be something wrong, the fish might be sick or something. So yeah, we have all the data to show us that fish at this weight, they should eat this much. So okay. I, I, at the farm, I ensure that the fish I um, fed a correct ration of feed they're not overfeeding and also not underfeeding. I mean, okay. by overfeeding, you're wasting feed and that goes into the cost of the farm, the production cost. As you know, feed takes up about 40% of operations in a farm. So okay. it's very expensive very to just expensive. throw feed into the water and waste the feed. At the same time, if you overfeed a fish, it doesn't mean it will grow bigger faster. A fish will eat how much you want to eat, like a human being, you know. If I give you 10 plates of rice, you can't finish it. So it's the same for a fish they eat as much as they want to eat. Right. Yeah. And if you underfeed a fish, of course, the fish won't grow as fast. If the fish don't grow as fast, you cannot sell it, you cannot harvest it. So it's also less profits for the farmer. Right on. 
So basically, you have a, a certain weight of a fish where you have to that you have to reach, right? Yeah. You are cultivating this fish from since a fry. from a fry, one of the youngest stages of the fish, and you you grow it all the way up to until about uh, four to five kilos. Four to five kilos. Day. Last question. The aquaculture sector keeps on growing, yeah. right? They're still growing as a population. What is your major concern of the aquaculture sector, sector for the future upcoming years? Let's say for the next 10 years. Well, of course the aquaculture sector is growing. For example, in Singapore, a lot of the government is helping to promote it for food security with the growing population. So there's a lot of um, support from the government, but also about one of the concerns is that are not enough um, young farmers or people who wants to go into the sector because you know farming is a tough job and everybody wants to work in the bank in the office but not many people like the sun and the sea so that's a major concern for I don't know um, for few for the future that not many people wants to do farming to farming you know? right yeah. So we could also compare it maybe to farming vegetables, right? Yeah, it's the same well, it's thing. It's the same, right? Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same. So, well, uh, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. Uh, uh, Ian, it's a pleasure. And I wish you all the best. Same. Keep on working as you're doing. And we'll meet another time. Maybe we'll speak about other topics next pleasure. time. Thank you very much. Well.